Hello, and welcome to a new video. I'm still alive. Woo! So, yeah, the people who watch my channel regularly will know that this is the first video that I've uploaded in, I want to say, six weeks. But, yeah, that is because I have been moving house, and for a good portion of those six weeks, I've not had a computer to make a video on. Or at least I've had a computer, but it's been in a box. So, anyway, I won't bore you with these details. Let's get to a video. So, I asked you guys on the Discord for an idea for just like a short video to make just to get back into it just to get something up relatively quickly and one of the suggestions was how to do basic car mechanics in unity which I thought was a good one. So that's what we're doing today. So the first thing you're going to need, obviously, is a car model. I've grabbed this one off of the Asset Store. It's a free model. It's a, a very high quality free model, really. And uh, I will put a link to it in the description, obviously. And crucially for this tutorial, it has uh, separate wheel meshes, which is not 100%. You don't absolutely have to have separate wheel meshes, but it does make it easier to make the car look better. So if you're using a model that doesn't have separate wheel meshes, at some point in the video, you can just tune out because the rest of it it won't apply to your model, but this one does. So I'm going to do the full whack. So the first thing we want to do is to add to our car a rigid body and a box collider. Now with the box collider, we want to make it roughly the size of the car. It's for what we're doing in this tutorial. It's not really that important. The main thing is that it does not touch the ground. The wheels need to protrude from the box collider because if the box collider touches the ground, the box collider is going to essentially grind against the floor and the wheels aren't going to be able to do anything. So, I mean, as it is now is, is fine for what we're doing. I could fine tune it a little bit. And obviously if you were doing like some kind of racing game where you've got collisions and stuff, you, you would want to make it more fit the actual car rather than just be a box. But for what we're doing, this will do for now. It, the, the main thing is that it does not stick below the wheels. So after that, we go to our car and we're going to create a empty game object and we're just going to call this wheel meshes and then in here we've got our four wheel meshes we're just going to grab them drag them into the wheel meshes object and then leave them there for later use and then we're going to create another one and this one's going to be called wheel colliders now in here we want to create another empty object and this one's going to be called uh, we'll start off with the front right collider and we're going to add a component and that component is going to be a wheel collider now if i just drag this over here at the minute you can't see anything it just looks like an empty object but if i make this radius a bit bigger here you can see we've got this circle so having gone through all this before i started recording the video i know that the radius of these wheels is around 11 or at least 11 is close enough for what we're doing just switch to orthographic so we can get a more accurate view so we want to stick the wheels roughly where they're going to go which in my case, I believe it ended up being 32.5. Yep, 32.5 on the x-axis, 11.5 on y, and then 50.5 on there. So that, that gets us that wheel. So now we obviously we need to do that for the other four wheels. So I'm just gonna duplicate this three times, rename these to be front left collider, back right collider, and back left collider. And then obviously the positions of all of them need changing. So for the front left one, we just move it to the other side. And then for the back ones, they both want moving to, I believe it's 33.25. Or is it minus 33.25? Yeah, minus 33.25. And then that should have given us... Yeah, all the wheels are roughly close enough to where they need to be. So I've got a plane here underneath the car. If you haven't done that already, you're going to need something for the car to drive around on. Now, if I press play now, you'll notice a slight problem. And that's that the car is apparently made entirely of bounce. And that is because the wheel colliders have got these default values, these like spring, damper, and all that kind of thing. And they're basically the setup and ready to go. The problem with that is our car is not. Because our rigid body, it currently believes it, it weighs a mass of one. There's a, a lot of talk as to, you know, how to handle mass in Unity and like what the unit should equate to. But one is 100% not enough. So I'm just going to put it to a thousand. So that would be about a ton if you assume that one is one kilogram. And there we go. It behaves a bit more normal though, except for that one. Okay, so the reason it's, it's uh, smashing into the ground there is because I've got the right and the left rear wheel colliders both on the right hand side. So if I just switch the left one to minus, that should fix that little problem. There we go. Now it's sat on all four wheels. So our next thing is we need some code. So let's create some code. So we're going to our uh, scripts folder. Um, I'll just call it 
uh, wheel controller. So the first thing we're going to want to do in here is grab a reference to all of our wheels. So we just grab the wheel collider component and I'll just call this one front right. Uh, we'll just call it front right. So next we're going to need some variables and again I've got some variables preloaded here because I've already gone through this script once to try and work everything out so uh, I'm going to put the variables in as I write but you will probably want to mess around with them depending on what you're doing with it. So we need an acceleration variable which should be fairly self-explanatory. A breaking force variable. Braking force being how quickly we come to a stop when we apply the brakes. And then we need two private variables. Current acceleration. And these are both just zero by default. And then current brake force. So now we're ready to be doing something with these variables. We're going to be working in fixed update because this is all physics stuff. So I'll try and explain all this as I go, but I've also got these nice little comments that I can just paste in. So our first thing is we're going to get our input from the break key, which I'm going to make be spacebar. So we're just going to say get key. So if the get key obviously means if the key is held down, not if it's just being pressed once, but if we are currently holding the key down, key code dot space. And then what we're going to do if that is the case is we're going to set current break force to equal breaking force. Else current brake force is just going to equal zero. And then we're going to apply some acceleration to our wheels. And to do that, we're going to say front right dot motor torque. And this is where the Unity wheel collider thing comes into its own. And that's going to be set to current acceleration. And then we'll just copy that because we want to do the same thing for the left hand wheel. And then finally, we're going to apply the brake force. So for this one, front right break talk equals current break force and then we can just copy that or we can spell break correctly and then we can copy that and this time we want to do it for the four wheel so as you may have guessed this is i'm, I'm doing a, a two wheel drive car here if you were doing four wheel drive then you would apply this to all four wheels but regardless of it's four wheel drive or two wheel drive the brakes are going to apply on all four wheels now, if we head back over to Unity and we drag our references in, well, first off, we have to put the script on the car. And we'll just collapse these. We don't need to look at those. And then we're going to drag our wheels into the right, into the correct places. So front left, front right, etc. Back right, back left. Obviously, we've got our public values here, so we can change those if we need. And I've just realized I've actually missed one out. Sorry, I am. It's been a while. I'm a little rusty. So I've put the wrong bit of code under that comment. That's the comment for that bit of code. And this bit of code we're missing. So current acceleration equals acceleration. And then we multiply that by input dot get axis uh, vertical. And so if you don't know, input dot get axis vertical returns a value between minus one and one, depending on, you know, if you're pressing up or down. And it's a smooth, it's like an analog value. So what that means is that we can, using this one value, we can get both forward and reverse by pressing up or down. So if we just try that, we should be able to accelerate our car backwards and forwards. There we go. And backwards. And then brake. So that's all well and good, but what about turning and stuff? So let's go back into our code. And we're going to need some more uh, variables for this one. So first off, public float max turn angle. And um, we're going to, I'm going to set this to 15. Again, this is another one that you just play around with and find what works for you or whatever you're doing. And then we're going to need another private float. And this is going to be current turn angle. So now let's go down to the bottom of our fixed update. And we'll apply this by doing current turn angle equals max turn angle multiplied by input dot get axis horizontal. So that's going to work the same way that the acceleration does. We're getting the access this time, uh, access for the horizontal, which so this time it's left and right, or if you're on the keyboard, A and D. It's going to give us a minus one to a one. And then we can use that to set the angle front left dot steer angle, another extremely useful feature of the wheel collider. And we're just going to set it to current turn angle and then do the same for the right. 
So let's go back to Unity. And if we press play now, we should be able to see our colliders. I'll just highlight our colliders so you can see them. You can see they turn. Not very much because I've limited the angle to 15, but you can see they do turn. And if I zoom out and start driving around, we can actually turn the car. So that's great, but we do still have a problem. And that is, if you look at the wheels when, when we're moving, they're not doing anything. The wheels are just static. So this is the point in the video where if you are using a car mesh that does not have separate wheels, if it's like a really low resolution mesh and the wheels are part of the overall mesh and cannot move separately, you're done. You, you don't need to do anything else. If you do have wheels that are separate to the mesh and you want them to move like a, a real car wheels, then we need to do a little bit more work. So the first thing we need to do is to get a reference to the physical mesh of the wheels. And we're going to get that as a transform. I'm just going to say front right transform. And then we'll just copy that three times. And then obviously it's front left transform, back le right transform, and then back left. And then I'm going to go drag those references in before I forget. And remember, these are the wheel meshes, not the wheel colliders. So left front. Left rear, right front, and right rear. That's left rear. So back to our code. And Wheel Collider's got a function that basically does all of the hard work for us here, but we need to set it up. And there's a little bit of code involved in setting it up, so we're going to create a new function for this, just to keep things a little bit neat. I know I've put everything in here, which generally speaking, you probably wouldn't do. You'd break this up into more manageable chunks, but this one we're going to break into a more manageable chunk. Update wheel uh, is going to be the name, and we're going to take in a wheel collider, which I'm just going to call col, and a transform, which I'm just going to call trans. So first we need to get a vector 3, which we're going to call position, because it is the position. Then we need a quaternion which I'm going to call rotation, again, because it is the rotation. And then we populate these values using the wheel collider. So call, which is our wheel collider that we've passed in. And there's a function called get world pose. And then we just say out position and out rotation. And that basically gets the rotate. We can spell it correctly. And that gets the rotation and the position of the wheel collider and puts it into this vector three and this quaternion. And then you probably know what's coming next. We can just use that to directly set the trans position and rotation. And then once we've done that, all we need to do is go back up to the fixed update. And at the end here, we just need to call this function for each of our wheels. So now if we go back to Unity and we'll, what we'll do now is we'll drag our camera into the car so it's childed. And then we'll just, you know, move it a little bit closer. So we can see a front wheel and then we'll press play. So now we're locked onto the wheel and you can see that turning actually turns the wheels. And then we actually get rotation as well. And that is pretty much it. Let's move our camera back here, flip him around a bit. And just give him a little bit of rotation. And then if we press play now, we essentially have a little car game going. Although you can't, re you can't really tell because there's no features on the road. Let's just quickly throw some cubes and stuff down so that you can actually tell what's going on. So it looks a bit static because the camera is locked, sp like, dead on the car. Like, wherever the car moves, the camera moves. You wouldn't usually do that in a game. You'd have, it, you'd have the camera follow. So there was a bit, you know, a bit more smooth movement, but we're not working on camera movement in this. We're just getting a car going. And to see it working a little bit more fluidly, let's drag our camera back out here and up here. And we'll try that instead. It'll look a, li a little bit less awkward now when it drives. Now you would also want to do a little bit of work with things like the physics and the traction and stuff like that because as you can see now he's kind of like he's on an ice rink 
because we haven't spent any time setting up things like friction and all that, but that is literally a case of just messing around with numbers until you find something that works for you. But yeah, that is the end of this video, and all that's left to do now is to thank my amazing Patreons. Extra special thanks for those of you who, stick, who stuck with me through an entire month of no video. I know you guys are forking over a little bit of money every month, and it must feel a bit irritating when you get a month without a video at all. But yeah, massive thanks to you guys, and of course, extra special thanks to the Sugar Daddy slash Mama Patreons, who are Dave Maldeen, Reg Reed, Gabriel White, Aaron Clark, Mr. Drunken Dragon, Julian, Andrew Hansen, and AG. Sorry if I've said that wrong. And that's it for now. I will be back much sooner than last time with a new video. It's, de it's definitely not going to be six weeks. Five weeks and four days maximum. And until then, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.